Hey, good morning. It's a sweaty, damp morning here in the garage, and we're going to try to finish off this project today if we can. Uh, at least get to the point where we can do staining and some of the sanding and that kind of thing. So I'm a big proponent of test fitting things before you put things together. So based on these measurements and that 14 and a half inch depth, I was planning to build this thing 16 inches deep. So for the fun of it, I cut the bottom piece and then just sort of laid the rails. And you can see 14 and a half inches is not exactly the depth of this particular slide. In fact, look at it. It's actually almost 18 inches deep, which means this box is not going to be deep enough, but that's all right. I just cut the bottom piece. I haven't cut the sides or anything with the back. So I'm going to cut a longer bottom part of the shelf and then hope that I have enough material for this because I bought an eight foot piece and I was planning to use pretty much every inch of it. So I may have to redesign a little bit how I'm doing the other side, but uh, yeah. Uh, this is why you always measure twice and test fit things before you waste time putting them together. So that should be much better. The base is now 18 inches and I've got the back attached at 20, the same height as the side pieces. And you can see I left a gap running down the sides, uh, right down there, where the plywood should slot in. Now for the back, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another piece like this as a vertical. And I'm going to use a router and I'm going to cut a channel in the side so that the plywood will sit into that and get sandwiched between that piece and this. Uh, so I can kind of slide that panel down and it'll stay nice and secure. Just tack it with a few nails and we should be good to go. So I've never used a router before. I think that's going to be pretty obvious by this, but I uh, set up a jig here and my table all aligned. Um, it did do what I wanted it to do. So I now have a piece of wood that's got this little channel cut down the side. It's not straight, it's not even close to straight, but when it's attached to the side of the box, like so, you're not gonna be able to tell. So it actually aligns pretty perfectly. I've got my gap running down the side that the uh, plywood will slot into. I'm gonna run my pocket holes going that way to hold this piece on, and we should have a pretty well-built box and all the crazy DIY stuff be hidden on the inside. So where we are right now, I've got the main cabinet done. Uh, it's clamped because I've been uh, gluing the sides on. So the bottom are held by friction um, with the channels that I cut in the sides. It's actually like kind of wedged in down here. The top is held by liquid nails glue. Uh, I've had this clamped overnight, so those clamps will come off. I ended up putting a piece across the top uh, just to keep the box square and to give it a little bit of extra support since it's going to be one of the main supports for the table itself. So clamps will come off. Uh, then I'm going to essentially take my butcher block, which is over there. Uh, I'm going to cut it down to 18 inches, so I'll rip down the length of it, hopefully do that pretty straight, and then uh, flip it upside down, measure on the bottom where this is going to sit, figure out the spacing for my other shelf. For the other side, I think what I'm going to do is just an open foot, so just kind of an L-shaped foot and then a, a center piece to give it some extra stability. Um, so when you look at it from the side, it'll look closed, but it's going to be kind of a capital I shape, like a beam. So here's the design I landed on for the final foot. I've been calling this this entire time and realized that probably made no sense, but this was always the view that I had in my head, so it was always going to kind of look like a foot. Uh, so this is going to be the vertical. So this goes up to the side. I'm putting some support in just to give this a little bit of support so it doesn't wiggle or sway. Because uh, this furniture, I imagine, is going to be climbed down a bit. So I've got it clamped on both sides, run pocket holes down the inside. Uh, there's holes that go from the verticals into the base, and then the base into the back support. And then this back piece will be one solid piece just to give it the support for the table uh, and any kind of load bearing or weight that kind of thing. So should be fairly stable. So I'm going to get this completely screwed together and then uh, we'll take the next step with the top and getting it all laid out and figure out what the spacers are going to be between this piece and the box. So please excuse the messy garage, but I've got my two uh, supports roughly placed. I haven't done the centerpiece because I'm waiting so I can actually measure that. I've got my butcher block here and with any piece of butcher block you want to kind of investigate or uh, 
sort of examine both sides. There's usually a good side and a bad side. So it meant as the top and bottom. It's not typically marked. So on this one, you can see how clean this side is. But if I flip to the other, you can see on the back, there's a bunch of knots and other little pits and everything. So this would be the bottom. And I'm gonna look for kind of the worst piece of it. And that's what I'm gonna cut off. So I've got as stable of a, uh, I guess, side as possible. I've only taken off about six inches. So looking at the two sides, it doesn't really matter which side I pull off. I'll probably pull that one so I can get these knots and a few of those pieces out. I'll measure just to make sure that my cut isn't gonna go across these because I'll end up with a rough edge and I don't really want that exposed. So wherever I can get the cleanest cut line on my six inch cut, that's where I'm gonna cut it. All right, I'm pretty much ready to go uh, as far as the main cut. A little nervous because if I do this wrong, I have to buy a whole new butcher block top. But I've got a little extra room, I can always make it a bit narrower than I had originally intended. So uh, looking at this and looking at my measurements here, this top is actually 25 inches wide, so to end up with an 18 inch wide top, we have to cut off seven inches. So I measured over seven inches and kind of looked at where my cut was gonna line up. And actually this side is a much better side to cut off because seven inches is that mark right there. And if you look up the length of the material, I don't cut across any knots. On the other side, it would have cut across about six of them. Now, when you do something like this and you're using a piece of kind of guide material to run your saw against, you wanna make sure that you measure how wide the base of your tool is, not just where you want your cut to be. On mine, from the edge of the base to the inner edge or outer edge rather of the blade is exactly four inches. So I've measured over 11 inches to put my guide material and clamp that in place. That way when I cut, my blade's gonna line up right at seven inches. I can guide right along this and get a nice smooth, even cut. The other thing you wanna look at is where that cut line lines up with your sawhorses or whatever you have this sitting on. Um, you wanna make sure that your overhang is going to support that. You can clearly see in my case that it's not. So I need to take this material, slide it over that way a little bit to make sure when I cut, I'm not gouging into the top of my sawhorses, which I have done before. So learn from my mistakes in the past. Okay, prep work continues. I've gotten the uh, edges of the underside of my tabletop routed down, so those are nice and smooth. Sanded off the circular saw marks along that table edge, so that'll look nice once it's stained. And I was doing a test fit on the main cabinet, and uh, I knew I was gonna have an issue with the bottom rails that in order to clear this face frame, I was gonna have to um, put a little spacer in, which I've done, you can kind of see those on the inside underneath the rails. And I knew I would get close on clearance, but really I didn't know how close I was gonna be. So this is actually about as perfect a design build as you can do without it being uh, non-functional. So this still slides out and back in uh, and slow close works and all of that, but just barely and it's not all the way in so if i push it all the way in you see it'll clear so yeah uh got my cabinet without much room to spare so i'm gonna get this all screwed down because i'm pretty sure i would have clearancing issues getting in there with the screwdriver once it was attached to the table and then once the rails are all attached i'll take the garbage can out and uh get it all positioned and get it hooked to the tabletop and then be ready to stain hey also Playing with a new technique and a new tool here, I bought a router, just a little handheld trim router. And uh, I've actually done a bit of work on this new table with it. So I've rounded off all the edges and I'm experimenting with uh, a plunge setting on it. So bringing this router tip down below the level of the bed, which gives you this little edge. So what this leaves me with, if you can see it, is an angle like that where it drops down and then rounds off gives the table a nice new finished edge. Now I'm gonna do the other side too, which is blank and I have a tip for you. Uh, the hardest part about using a, a small router like this that's not mounted to a table is it wobbling. So going like that while you're going and having a kind of a weird cut. So what I'm doing is using just a piece of scrap and using that to keep my router flat so then I can just run and go straight along the piece of material. Now if you've not used one of these before, there's a little bearing at the bottom of the router. So once this hits its depth, that little bearing is going to run along the uncut part of the material and give you a nice straight line. So you kind of set it into the depth and just sort of let it run. Now the other thing to note about these is these are directional. So you want to hold it like this 
So this bump is pointing backwards and the front of the tool is essentially this. Uh, if you go the other way, it does tend to kick, so be a little careful about that. It also makes a heck of a lot of sawdust, so uh, plan for cleanup on this a little bit. And they're insanely loud, so uh, checks all the boxes. So I'm going to get this other side done. I'm going to figure out how to do the ends uh, and still keep it level. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to stage that on the table, but we'll work that out. And then my top will be done, and then we just got to screw it all together. So to give you a feel for the mess, this is after one pass of the router, but it did go through and cut my channel exactly the way I wanted it to. I'm still gonna sand this little edge because that is quite sharp. Uh, but aside from that, should have something that looks like I bought it. So probably one of the best parts of any video, uh, she's done. So I've got this thing fully assembled. It looks like some kind of crazy sign the way it is now, but there's a shelf on the one side that I've left open. And then over on the other side is my cabinet. So obviously she's upside down. So I'm gonna flip it over and we'll take a look at the finished product. So here's the finished product and it's incredibly stable, uh, perfectly flat. I like it, it's level. So this is the side that's going to face the sink. So as you're sitting on the couch, this will be the side that faces you. Um, obviously I still have to stain it. We'll do that in another little video. I'm going to stain it, we'll do something on the top, and then probably polyurethane or something just to really seal it in so I don't have to worry about drinks or whatever. But, down on this side, I did end up routing the top out just a little bit. And my trash can pulls out. So the thought is we sitting here at the sink, doing any kind of work, throw the trash directly in, and then, since it's slow close, take a little kick, and that'll pull itself in. Uh, this is the routed edge on the top. goes all the way around. So I wanted something strong enough the kids could climb on it and clearly uh, this fits the bill. So I'm sitting on it and so he's standing on it and it's not shifting or creaking or anything. It's exactly what I was hoping for for the camper. So Zoe likes it. I like it. I'm going to get this little one to bed and as always we'll end it with a dad joke. So why do you never see elephants hiding in trees? Do you know, Zoe? Why don't you ever see elephants hiding in trees? Uh, there was this <laughs> Yep, so Zoe's right. The answer is, you never see elephants hiding in trees because they're really good at it. And sometimes they run around. Good night, everybody. We'll see you the next time. Do you like it? That's a garbage can. Can you pull it out? See? Like this? And you can push it back in. Can you give it a push? Okay. There you go. Good job, honey. Yeah. Just in case it needs trash in it. Yep. Just in case it needs trash in it. Yep, or a cardboard box. Oh, it goes to camp. Yeah, this is going to go in the camper, Zoe. Oh, the camp camp? Mm-hmm.